Speaking of looking ahead, this next team looked ahead and they survived a close one for Washington. Wins off of a game-winning field goal against Wazoo, 24-21. to And you want to talk about a gauntlet. If you're a Washington fan or a supporter of Washington, you want to talk about home against ASU win by eight. On the road, win by nine against Stanford. Win on the road against USC by 10. Win at home against Utah, 18 Utah by seven. At Oregon State by two. And then you just beat Wazoo by three. What a gauntlet. Cody, I'm going to throw it to you. Um, The second half offensive struggle has just been weird. Self-inflicted penalties, self-inflicted wounds from Washington. Um, what did you see from this game? We'll start with the bad and maybe end on a good on a good note for Washington fans as they play Oregon this week. W- w- that sure. was a weird game. You were texting me about it too um, the entire time. Yeah, you know, what I saw, because I watched this game from start to finish, right? Like, Okay, bet. Perfect. What I saw in this game was something's up with Michael Penix. Don't know what it is. I don't know if he's sick, if he's hurt. He's not 100% right now. I don't know what it is, um, but there's something going on with Michael Penix. Hopefully he can get it figured out for this Pac-12 championship game. But on the flip side, what I saw from Washington State on the defensive side of the ball seemed like more want to. They were getting off of blocks. They were tackling really really well in the open field which as as we've seen throughout the year Washington starts to kind of create momentum and create big plays um throwing it to their wide receivers and letting them work in space and Wazoo's DBs did such a good job in open space against Washington's receiver receivers did mm-hmm. Roma Dunze get his seven for 120 and two touchdowns yes he did but they made him work for it um they were doing a good job against the run. They did a really good job playing with energy. Um, and realistically, it took Washington running a trick play on fourth and one in their own territory late in the fourth quarter. Bro. <laughs> which we'll get to <laughs> the, in a second. Jeez. To, to beat them. And I think Wazoo, like, they deserve the hats off. I tweeted it. I said hats off to Coach Dykert and the Cougs. They were the better team today. And they were the better team on Saturday. But the more talented team ended up winning. And again, I think this is where aggressive play calling can make or break your season and or game. And I think that that's what happened on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um, Washington decided that they were going to do a really good job and execute a really difficult play. And my, like having a senior quarterback and a senior wide receiver that you're giving the ball to, I think worked perfectly and it was on time um, and they had to have it, you know, um, and they executed it flawlessly. Fourth and one on your own 29. I love the call there. Hey, let's not punt it and hope for our defense to stop them here, especially when they could just get a field goal. Let, let's, let's take the game over into our hands. Apparently that was a read option with the reverse behind. Kind of take yes. us through what you saw on that play. And then, um, I mean, shoot, they're, they're kickers on scholarship now. That's that's amazing. Yeah. That was good by DeBoer. Yeah. No, that was awesome. No, what I saw on that play was it looked almost like an inside zone. And if Michael Pinnock saw on the zone read to the right, because my Aroma Dunes, I lined up on the right. The zone read kind of crossed Michael Pinnock's face. And he's able to kind of see as the – player crosses all right is he following the zone read okay perfect now i can turn and hand it to my guy coming back around on the reverse Mm. so if that was a zone read and that was an actual read unreal call unreal execution and there you go washington ends up winning so hopefully short week for Washington, especially with Oregon playing on Friday, definitely an advantage for Oregon after beating the hell out of Oregon State. And mm. now Jonathan Smith's gone, and Child's questioning things, DJU, we'll get into all that later. But um, Washington moves on. Again, a trap game against Wazoo. They'll be playing Oregon this week. Oregon's a nine-and-a-half point favorite. I'm stoked to watch that one. But um, you being a guy that's, that watches Washington more, we haven't seen – Polk didn't get a catch last game. McMillan had five catches for 26 yards. I thought the defense looked good. Braylon Trice 
five sacks. They, they made big plays when they needed to there in the end uh, to force, you know, Washington to give the ball back up to, to, to Washington, Washington State give the ball up to Washington. But any things that stick out to you from this game that they need to improve on? I mean, Penix did look emotional at the end of the game. Um, and I think he like went off the field immediately. It was it was a weird ending there. Yeah, there there was some speculation that he might be sick. Um, so like playing with the flu. Mm. Um, again, nothing's been confirmed. UW has been kind of mum on it. Uh, they they tried to interview him about it, and he was very kind of like ho hum. So, um, we don't know. I just unfortunately, and this is just like the former college athlete and current coach right now, like. I was seeing a lot of people like, oh, see, Michael Penix is classless. He left the field. Like, guys, have you ever been sick and tried to play a whole college football game? No, probably none of you have. In the cold so weather, under- too. In cold, like, bro, like, that's probably the most miserable he's ever been in his life. Now, again, this is if he was sick. I don't, we don't know. But something was off with him all game. His body language was terrible. Um, he looked like he didn't have any energy. So like, just understand that these guys are putting their all into these games. It is not classless for a guy to be assisted off the field when he's not a hundred percent. That's literally mm. what the people are there to do is to help him get off the field. Especially when, guess what? They're rushing the field guys. They're rushing. Like the fans were rushing the field. If I'm sick, I don't need to be around. 25,000 students rushing the field. Mm. I just don't. So, again, I'll get off my soapbox, let Michael Penix live. I think something's going on with him. We'll probably be able to confirm it before the Pac-12 championship. Hopefully he's able to get right, and we can have a good game on Friday. Luckily, he'll be playing indoors at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Better weather. Um, Indoors will always be fun there. Lastly, I know he's not going to win it, but Romeo Adunze deserves to win the Blinnikoff. What he did that game, he's the best contested one-on-one catcher in all of football. But the name of Martin Harrison Jr., the popularity of him, I think he's going to win it just based on the popularity. But you look at the stats, his stats are better. So I hope he wins it. That's my vote if I was the committee. But it's Give tough. him the Belitnikov, damn it. He deserves it. <laughs> he does. Well, I mean, even like yeah. he's done it in a he's done it in a downpour. He's done it in good weather. He's done it against shitty teams. He's done it against good teams. He's done it against double teams. He's done it against single coverage, man coverage, zone cut. Co- like get like he's the best. I love mm. Malik Neighbors. I love Michael Thomas Jr. or Brian Thomas Jr. Brian from Thomas, LSU. Yeah. I love Marvin Harrison Jr. I love Keon Coleman. But Roma Dunze has been the best guy, personally. Am I biased? Maybe. But I've gotten to watch him in person twice. Utah, great secondary. Cooked. Oregon, great secondary. Cooked. So at this point, to me, there is no debate. 